Normally, on this channel, you're used to me showing you dull brown moths. Not at all like this one. Now this is what you call a moth, not the usual round jobs that I've been showing you of late. This is the magnificent female emperor moth, the UK's only member of the Saturnidae family of moths. Saturnidae being the famous silk moths known around the world to be much larger than even this large specimen. From wingtip to wingtip it's nearly four inches this specimen three and a half to four inches it's a cracker of a moth unfortunately in Nottingshire it's extremely rare and it's got a very divided history this magnificent moth unfortunately as already mentioned is very rare in Nottinghamshire and as I've also said its history as a species in the county of Nottinghamshire is about the equivalent of the tale of two halves in a game of football. Historically, years ago, where I am now, on Budby South Forest, you would have expected to have seen this moth. Traditionally, emperor moth is a moth of heathland and moorland. Even now, if you go onto the upland moors of Derbyshire and Yorkshire, you'll find it to be reasonably common. Males can be attracted to females quite easily. This is a day flying species. This one's not mated, and I know that because she's captive bred. I recently purchased some pupa, and this is the result. Such a moth as the emperor moth obviously has nothing else that you could possibly confuse it with in the UK, and certainly not in Nottinghamshire. Most of the county's records actually have involved females, which have been attracted to murky vapour light traps run by moth trappers. But there are a lot of records of larvae as well, and the larvae will commonly feed on rough plants like bramble. In a heathland setting, bramble is no doubt utilised as well, but so are heathers. This is one of three I've presently got at, at home. The other female has already, it appears, been mated, and she started laying some eggs today. It's the larva that I've always wanted to see. But if I would recommend a moth to anyone as being a must-see, it would have to be this species. Someone remarked recently on a Facebook post that the end of the wings here almost look like a snake's head from sideways on, and I suppose in many ways they do. And obviously the eye spots are used as a deterrent against predators. Well over a hundred years ago, this moth would have been where I'm laid now, on Budby South Forest. And its range would have seen it found all the way through the sandstones, forests and areas of Mansfield, as well as the general Sherwood Forest area. For some reason, it died out. Whether it was over collected or not, I've no idea. And for many years, it was hardly seen at all. But then, in the late 1990s and the early part of this present century, it made something of a strange comeback in Nottinghamshire. This moth's comeback in the county 
came from a rather unexpected area, or should I say rather unexpected habitat, because since its reappearance here again in, in the late 1990s and the early part of this century, the habitat and records of this moth have come from Trent Valley sites, not heathland sites at all, in fact there's no heathland site in the Trent Valley. Some close as you get up just top side of Newark crowned at Spalford Warren. But all the recent records of this glorious moth, many of which have been larva, started off in the Attenborough Nature Reserve area. And over a number of years, and not seen annually either, the moth seems to have spread its range northwards or northeastwards, following the line of the Trent. It was seen at Netherfield and then gradually worked its way up appearing at Newark Trent Valley sites notably around the Bestorp area. Occasionally it's reported from elsewhere but its occurrence away from Trent Valley is very rare. But there have been two records, one was from Eaton and Gamstonwood a few years ago and the last Nottinghamshire record was in the Lound area. I think if I recall right it was from the Tilm Pits area where a beautiful female like this was found on a fence post. It was well twitched as well, apparently. That was a couple of years ago. Still, this was one moth I always hoped to find, secretly tucked away in heathland sites of Sherwood Forest, either at Clumber or here at Woodby South Forest. But it's not here. During the day like this, we'll spend most of the day calling, as we call it, in which the female is producing pheromones to attract a male. I would be jumping up and down and doing cartwheels if all of a sudden a male appeared here. Not to be, I'm afraid. But anyway, this is the Emperor Moth. The most exciting and outstanding moth you could wish to see in Nottinghamshire. She's a beauty. There's a cracking thing in it. A beautiful moth. The interesting thing about its modern range in the county and that range not being in your typical emperor moth moorland and heathland habitat is something that's been mirrored across midland counties i believe people have questioned the original appearance of emperor moth larva at Attenborough nature reserve in the early part of this century again the question of captive bred releases was raised no one could prove otherwise. But the way that the moth has spread northeastwards through the Trent Valley since appearing at Attenborough obviously means that there's a population that's actively moving northeast. You would think a captive bred population wouldn't do that. It, to me, it shows a natural range spread rather than an artificial one. If someone was going to release these beautiful moths in Nottinghamshire, surely they would have chosen a site where the moth was originally found. If they've got the nouns to breed these things, they wouldn't just chuck them out of a car window. At least a respectable breeder wouldn't do. Whatever its origins, its recent origins are, does it really matter when you put a moth like this back in the county? <laughs>